what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling mm -hmm. good. Today, guys, we're back here on new video, guys. Today, my beautiful guys. My name is Devin, and welcome to the first video. Today, we're going to be reacting to the meaning of life in Islam. Who? This was recommended by someone on my YouTube channel. Um, he, the person, had me on Instagram. He went to DM me, so he recommended this video for me. So, so let's give this a try here and see how it turns out. You know how to do. So, so let's try it. Let's get into this video. At some point in life, we will all ask the big life questions. Why am I here? Where am I going? What is my purpose? Islam provides clear and concise answers. Allah asks us in the Quran, did you really think that we had created you without any purpose? This video aims to show you the meaning of life from an Islamic perspective. Allah tells us why we are here in a simple but profound verse in the Quran. He says that the only reason we were created was to worship him. See, when we think of worship, we think of praying. But actually, worship in Islam is far deeper than that. Anything we love the most, or obey the most, or rely upon the most, is an act of worship. This means that every single one of us is worshipping something, or someone, at any time. At any time. For example, some people love money more than anything, that their purpose becomes gathering and collecting as much as they can. This love for money is an act of worship. Some people rely on the approval of others to the point where the number of likes they get on Instagram affects their mood and behaviour. This reliance and dependence on others is an act of worship. And amazingly, this is why Allah says, have you seen the one who takes his own desires as his God? When fulfilling our desires becomes our purpose, we have worshipped our own selves. Arguably, this is the biggest God of today. We live in a time where we do what we want and strive to be who we want. If this was what life was all about, why are the richest people the emptiest? Why are celebrities taking their own lives? Why are so many people still unhappy? The answer can be found in the Quran where Allah tells us that the enjoyment of this life is the enjoyment of delusion. True. Sure. Chasing our desires in the material of this world is a drunk type of enjoyment. True fulfillment comes from directing all acts of worship to the creator, not creation. True. Sure. Part of directing all acts of worship to the Creator means fulfilling the purpose that He created us for. Like with anything created, the Creator is the one who decides the purpose of His creation. And Allah tells us that He created life and death to test which of us are best in deeds.
The test is to see how we live our lives in times of ease and times of difficulty. Will we resort to that which is good? Or will we resort to that which is bad? Since we all perceive what is good and bad differently, we cannot decide the standard, which is why Allah has assured us that the Quran is the standard that clearly distinguishes between what is right and what is wrong. What you'll find is that Islam does in fact cover all bases. It has answers to every life question and leaves nothing out on how we should live our lives. The biggest indicator that life is a test is that no one has the perfect life. Allah has created us with different strengths and different weaknesses. Different weaknesses. Some people may have wealth and beauty, but also be insecure. Some may be intelligent and confident, but also struggle with health problems. In Islam, what we have doesn't matter. What matters is what we do with what we have. How we use our strengths and weaknesses is what makes us superior in the eyes of Allah. It doesn't matter what colour you are, what gender you are, or what status you have. Superiority comes from your piety and your good action. As you can see, just like we have moral obligations, we also have religious ones too. Only until we do both do we fulfil our true purpose. Only until we fulfil our true purpose does Allah fill every heart with what it's searching for? And that is peace. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ طُوبَى لَهُمْ Fulfilling our purpose isn't just to find peace and fulfillment in this life, but also to prepare for what's to come after. Without any judgement after we die, there is no justice. Otherwise, what real difference is there between a corrupt leader with money and power, and children literally dying of starvation? This is why Allah asks us if we really think that the evil will be made equal to the righteous. For ultimate justice to be served, there must be something after we die. Which is why Allah promises to bring us back to life where we will all be judged on how we lived our lives. If we were careless, oppressed others and spread corruption, we will be held accountable. If we took care of ourselves, fulfilled our obligations, and made the world a better place for others, we will be rewarded. No injustice will be done to anyone, and Allah affirms this by telling us that even an atom's weight of good and an atom's weight of bad will be brought to account. Allah then decides our final destination after which there will be no more death. And that is either punishment in hell or perpetual bliss in paradise. Simply just having this belief puts ultimate meaning into our lives. 
it gives us the best reasons to strive for good whilst also actively avoiding the bad. What better reasons are there than the fulfillment we are all looking for in this life and eternal pleasure in the next? Considering we all make mistakes, isn't the thought of being held accountable for every action worrying? This is where the wisdom and mercy of Allah really shows. Firstly, doing more good deeds wipes out bad deeds, giving us more of a reason to strive to do good and to further fulfill our purpose. This has a knock-on effect and makes the world an even better place for everyone else. Secondly, even the prick of a thorn removes bad deeds, meaning any mental or physical pain we go through benefits us on the Day of Judgment. Again, this allows us to find solace and comfort in the most difficult of times. Thirdly, why not just ask for Allah's forgiveness? <laughs> لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا a religion is a set of rules and beliefs that you live your life by. If you don't want to be constrained by religion, you will be constrained by something else. Whether it be the rules you create for yourself, or the rules that your friends, your culture, or your society has imposed on you. Considering Allah has told us that he has perfected the religion of Islam for humanity, do we really think that any other rules we follow are going to be more fulfilling, more liberating than those provided by the Creator? Of course, the next question is, how can we be so sure that Islam is from the Creator? I could start by explaining the rational and intellectual foundations of Islam. I could then show you a plethora of reasons why the Qur'an cannot be man-made. I could speak to you about Islamic history and the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But since this video is about the meaning of life, I'll take a different approach. Out of the millions of explanations out there for the meaning of life, can you think of just one that is more fulfilling, more complete than the one that Islam provides? Islam doesn't just give the best incentives to make the most out of life, but it also creates an environment for humanity as a whole to thrive. Islam frees us from the worship of that which has no benefit and directs us to Allah, the maximally perfect and the only being worthy of our worship. Islam teaches us that it doesn't matter who has the best mix of strengths and weaknesses, what matters is how we use them and how we cope with them. Life being a test instantly explains why we go through difficult times and makes them much easier to manage as these times have wisdom and purpose. Death becomes something to look forward to and not something to be afraid of, and the meaning of life in Islam applies to every single human in the exact same way no matter who you are or where you're from. Islam is simple, universal, natural, and it just makes sense. So even if Islam wasn't the truth, it would still be the best, most fulfilling way of life to adopt. For that, it is safe to say that being a Muslim means you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Wow, this was nice. This is good. And I have a 
points he made right there. I like it. I truly, I truly I like it. That makes it feels like Islam is a true religion. 100%. That's how I feel, me. We Christians, we, we have the same pattern or the same rule, if I'm to say. It's just you guys explain it more in depth. And I like that. Uh, the way he breaks it down, explain it, I kind of like get it more. But like, you're talking about my own life. Because exactly what he was explaining right here, that is how I live my life. I'm not moved by money, neither am I moved by fame of how many views I have, even if this video did not trend the way it's supposed to trend. It really does not matter. It's people watch because they want to know my own perspective. It really does not matter. It really won't move me. But not that we change how my life goes on and move on to the next. That's a certain sense. But the way he described it, I will see myself as if I'm to call myself like an Islam or a Muslim right now, because your your the guidelines he, he made right there are exactly how my my pattern of life is going. So and that is how we Christians have been taught. But you guys explain it more in depth. And I like that. And I would love to share this video to more people to see. Because you explain this more in depth. I truly appreciate and I really, really like it. Can't like understand myself more while watching this video. And I appreciate the everything, the entire video itself. I really do like it. So I like that part you said, no matter how you think, um, um, you don't want to have, you don't want to worship God, or you don't want to follow um, certain religion. You shouldn't be um, imprisoned by something. Let me say society, yeah. culture, or even yourself or friends. So having purpose in your life, it's what matters. You see this money that everyone is chasing, and you kind of like, because you're chasing money every day, you don't go to church. Because you're chasing money, you mix your mocks, time for, time for worship and and to give mm -hmm. supplications to God, you no no no. This money I can't miss it. Uh, this business contract is like you are living the purpose you were brought to this world for material things that even when you die you still be here. That is it's, it's not going anywhere. So if you keep on depriving yourself every time it comes to the things of God, every time. Um, my religion we, we detest that when it's time for God you do what is for God say so keep the Sabbath day holy when it's time for you to go to church praise worship give your supplication pray listen to the word of God to enlighten yourself and you are using that same time to go make money or to go clubbing or to go do something that is not related to the scripture or something that is not in align to your purpose of being on it, it's it's very very wrong. It's totally wrong, and we see like you are backsliding. Little by little, you stop coming to church. So if you have that conviction in your heart, like you know within yourself, I mean this world not because of human per se. Neither is it because of money or fame or even school education. It's because of one, because of God. If you are to die today, this world keeps on going. That is what people ignore. When you die today, nothing changes. The world keeps on going. It will not stop. It will keep on going. Your property, your assets, your money, everything you've labored for, given to this person. That is how it works. But the, your purpose of you being on this world, if you are able to fulfill it, if you are able to help others, if you are able to... Give God all the praise and supplication and prayers and coming to Him, giving Him your whole heart, doing His word that He sent you to this world to do, preaching His word and bringing more people to His own side and enlightening people and living a very just and honest life. After this world, there's somewhere else. There's hell. There's heaven. Him, He said, there's hell and paradise. There's hell and heaven according to Christians. So, if you're able to fulfill your purpose there's somewhere else aside where we are right now you shouldn't see death as a thing of fear it should be a thing of 
you are going somewhere next. According to what he said, and that is true. Everything he said, yeah, I can relate to all because that is what my religion preach about. That is what Christianity is all about. But it's just the way he explained it is different from what I've been taught. Like how they do explain it for me in church. He explained it more in depth. And he broke it down. I love that. I truly, I truly do appreciate that when he broke it down. And it makes it simple to understand and something you would like to join. I really do like the video and I would love people, other people to see this video too because it's, it's very, very nice. I feel like you should just copy the life of Islam. But that's how the life of Christian is, is just understanding the first. <laughs> so the way you broke it down, I really do appreciate that. I really do like it. What do you think? Many of them. Just like I said, at a point in our life, we all ask, what's my purpose on earth? What have I been sent here to do? What am I doing? And just like I said, if you don't have, um, even if you're not a religious person, you don't believe in God, you don't believe in any religion, and you just feel that you're just on your own. At the end of the day, you're worshipping something. Just like I said, you're either worshipping yourself, you're worshipping the person you love, you're worshipping your social media, worshipping something, something you're giving your devotion to, something you're giving your time, your attention, or your energy to, at the end of the day, no matter how much you want to deny it, there's something you're putting in all your effort to, even if it's not a religion. There's a belief you're putting your things to, you're worshipping something in a different way. And the love of money, I'm beginning to understand it a lot better by this permission. Sometimes we feel the love of money is like, you focusing just on money or you killing someone just to take money or you doing extreme, extreme things like let me say you journey a cult just because of money or like you're going to rob or stuff like that but there are different ways that we just focus on just money like sometimes you just feel that's just what you're after say um, you want to be rich you don't want to live any hard life you just want to focus on getting money sometimes we forget everything around us just because we're trying to get give ourselves an easier life and sometimes we're just focusing on making that money like say i want to get the bag i want to get the bag i want to get the bag and most times we we don't look at that aspect of our life as we loving money as we pursuing just money and forgetting um, and forgetting all of that things that god has sent us to do on earth and I feel we should all spread love. Like when you see someone that is suffering, when you see someone that needs help, it does not need to be someone you have to give money to or someone you have to take care of. Sometimes you just see kids crossing, you can help them. Like you can be generous in different ways. It must not always have to be when you have to give out. And if you have to give out, so be it, give out. But there are different ways to help. Let me see, you see an old lady walking on the street carrying a lot of things, you can help her hold it also. You're being generous, you're being helpful. And we should not, sometimes, people just put it like, let me say you see someone struggling, bro. let me say um, two people are fighting or that drag someone to be like, it's none of my business, you just pass. I know it's none of your business, I know it does not concern you, but once in a while, we should just try to help. You don't know that way to help you do, it might go a long road for that particular person, they might be in danger. You know, just come to them and be like, please help me, someone is chasing me. Don't just forsake them and be like, I don't know you. What is they chase me to? I know it's going to cost you a lot if you're going to be chased also with the same person, but we should all try to help anyhow we can. We should all try to show love, love your neighbors, yourself, be there for people, whether they're strangers, whether they're your family, whether they're your friends. Be someone others can rely on. Thank you. That's good. So, guys, comment down below your first time hearing this. How was your reaction? Subscribe to our channel, guys. Give us your what do you think about the video? Comment down below. We want to hear your feedback. Also, you can share more videos like this to us. Like this channel, like our videos, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't know papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama. I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitch, it's in my bed I got scales all